Um, I'll try and stand in the dock because I should be good at it at this stage. Yeah. Um, it's also really unusual that I come to an event and my jacket looks distinctly average. Right. So I'm going to go home tonight, have a small cry and have a very strong word with my wardrobe. Uh, especially as, uh, thanks for the lovely introduction, Gary, really appreciate it. And it's my pleasure uh, to have worked with you the last couple of years. And, uh, a big up to everything you've achieved here in terms of bringing Ted to the city and everything else you've done. Um, so Gary has asked me to talk about celebration. Um, I'm not sure whether Gary has seen me celebrate before, but he possibly has, and I'm quite good at it. Um, you've definitely seen me drunk, so uh, that thing, those two things go hand in hand. I'm an experienced and seasoned professional. Because in Killing Will, where we're based, as, as my other half knows very, very well, we would celebrate a cat having a litter. Uh, we don't really need much of an excuse to celebrate. We just do it as a kind of a, as kind of part of our DNA. Not an original dairy man, so I do apologise for that. I'm originally from Armagh, um, but I, I met a dairy woman, and that's part of the contract. So you have to be able to see her mum's door from our house. Well, that's part of the contract. It's written in blood. There is no escaping it. It's just part parcel of coming to the city. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I, my experience has been 20 years here. Um, and I know a lot of people are really proud of the city. I'm very proud of the city too, in terms of where we've come from over the last, well, particularly over the last five years. Uh, when I was here over the last 20 years, uh, Derry had a reputation for having a chip on its shoulder. It was always somebody else's fault. We were always waiting on the, on the white horse to arrive in the night. We were always waiting for another pot of cash. And there's no doubt the city has suffered massive uh, underinvestment over the last couple of decades. What we wanted to do, or what I wanted to do, was find the positive people in the city, the entrepreneurs, because we had a very weak ecology of entrepreneurs and up-and-coming entrepreneurs, both social entrepreneurs and all the rest of it. Um, I'm a socialist capitalist. I like to make money, but I like to give it away <laughs> where I can. And I like to make that money work for people locally. I like to keep wealth locally. Uh, and one of the things, what, you need an army of people to do that. So every time there was a, a Belfast Telegraph article or a Derry Journal article, the city thrived on the misery around that often. And it attracted what we like to start, which we later refer to as misery moths. So the light, the, so the bright light of misery, I'm talking about that and focusing on that. And what we realized was we needed a platform which celebrated everything that's great about the city. Um, Roy McNulty was a, was a chairman of, um, a chairman of ILEX here at one stage, an organization which tried uh, for a number of years to redevelop everything, which is finally coming together. And Roy described the city 10 years ago to me which distressed me massively. He said, Ryan, Derry is a city that always seems to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Now, he meant it in the nicest possible way, but it stayed with me for the next number of years. So, what did I think we would do? So, whenever I became self-employed seven years ago, whenever you can more or less do whatever you want, uh, which is great, um, and make your week your own, um, I decided, look, let's find this network of individuals who really want to celebrate and be positive about the city. And we developed the New York Derry platform. And your dairy, doesn't always get it right, um, was really about celebrating all the small and big successes of the city, getting people engaged in things, uh, getting volunteering going in the city, finding like-minded entrepreneurs. And we now have 15 and a half, 16,000 people in your dairy. And it's everything from finding a missing person right through to we're bringing 500 jobs to the city and everything in between. But the focus is on positive and not ripping apart. That's not to say we can't criticize or critique ideas and things that might be happening in the city. Of course we can but the focus was in staying positive. And that was great, we did that for about 12 months. And we got loads of people involved in the platform. And we started to eradicate lots of the trolls, lots of the negative people. And if you notice, there was a lot of roadworks in the call roundabout quite recently, that's where the bodies are buried, but don't tell anybody. Um, but there's a, just a large gravestone that says misery moths, they're all in the call roundabout. Um, so we started kind of, kind of just retaining the positivity, but we also realized without a few quid, we couldn't really invest and reward people in the right way, the people who wanted to make change. So from that came the Lab Fund, Leadership, Ambition and Belief. So we got uh, businesses to sign up to that and donate £20.24 20 per month until the year 2024. And we give the money away every quarter to entrepreneurs and social entrepreneurs and community-based projects. Four questions to answer by a video. Do it every quarter, give it all away, reward the best and brightest of this city. And honestly, we've rewarded now about 62, 63 different businesses and individuals to do great things in the city. I think Gary has benefited from it once as well, which was brilliant. And at the right time, that sort of small amount of money can make a huge difference. No bureaucracy, no red tape, and it's brilliant. And that's what we need to see more of in Derry. So I just want to give a feel for the city. The city, in my mind, is transforming. Everything's a new, it's, it's just flying. We've had fantastic success stories in terms of some of the businesses that have, that have grown over the last number of years. Elemental has grown from 
two local girls took a, a business uh, turning over millions of pounds, going from strength to strength, learning, pooing, E&I engineering. It's really starting to happen for the city. And I think we're all part of that in this room tonight. So uh, just, you obviously want to hear a bit more about celebration. So I'm going to give you my tips in terms of how you celebrate things and, and how you celebrate the property. When I first came to the city, I was a director with business in the community. And we had a program called Partners in Leadership, which is a very grand name for turning really senior business people with head teachers. Because what happens with head teachers is to throw the keys to the school at some stage and say, look, you manage this place now, often by the training and support. And business people have access to usually the roads and resources. So it's matching founders and chief executives with head teachers. But what we found in that program was that um, the teachers uh, actually got less from the relationship often than the business people. And one of the great bits of feedback that we heard at that particular point was companies forget how to celebrate their achievements, but schools never forget. When you think about it, if you walk into a school, what do you see in the walls? Pictures, things the kids have done, photographs of the kids at their sporting events and achievements and all the rest of it. And this business guy, turned, the company turned over 25, 30 quid went, went, why do we not do that? When do we stop celebrating who we are, why we're successful, what makes us tick, what's part of our DNA. So my first rule is this, celebrate like a kid. Right? So think back to how you celebrate as a child and do more of that. I've developed a number of businesses. We've built Connected Health from a business with just 47 staff to uh, just over 1,200 in about five years. We're now turning over about 25 million quid. We do 30,000 hours of curve per week, 3.5 million curve visits per year. But I've also been involved in other businesses and the business that probably gave me most delight and most reason to celebrate are the ones which really shouldn't have been a business to start with. So, a friend of mine, we knew each other really well. We grew up in recruitment and graft and CPL and other businesses. And we said, look, let's do something different. Let's, let's attack the, the entire commercial recruitment sector in Ireland, GB, and he went, brilliant. And by some fluke, we applied for a contract which was a hell of a lot bigger than we should have even considered. Has anybody ever watched the film War Dogs? Right, this was, this was our version of War Dogs. And we come up with a really sexy name for our business. It was called Concea, which in Latin means confidant. Yes, yeah, very middle class. Um, so people that didn't know what it means just sounded kind of grand. We built a lovely deck. Uh, it was, the, the presentation was fantastic, but we had no track record really, other than what we'd done ourselves. Put it all together, and we got into competing against companies that were turning over 500 million, 600 million through the application process, invited to pitch. So we got this really sexy PowerPoint deck. It looked brilliant. The guys in Next was my former employer. CPL, huge company, brilliant company, love working for them. Uh, we were kind of scared. So we bluffed our way through it. It was like war dogs. Uh, didn't manufacture any invoices, just want to hold that up in case HMRC is in the room. But you get the idea. And we pitched and we won. And we left the office and we knew we'd won the pitch. After we finished the pitch, the feedback was so good, we went, I think we've got this. And we actually got phoned as we were walking down the stairs saying, you guys have got this because you're the two founders. You guys are bringing your magic to what we need here. And it's going to be a different relationship than dealing with one of the big corporates. And we literally danced the streets of Dublin. I would say for about 45 minutes, delirious. No alcohol involved, I have to say, just a promise. We just danced for that. So whenever you do party, party with people and celebrate with people that really deserve it. We often find ourselves celebrating all the wrong ways. Final piece is, please don't celebrate on your own. It's kind of weird, yeah? Always can find someone to celebrate with, okay? So I recently did an Ironman. How do you know there's an Ironman in the room? They'll tell you, okay? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I've done a number of endurance events, I've swam from Europe to Asia, done some half Ironman and all the rest of it, but I decided a couple of years ago that I would do an Ironman in Spain and the Basque Country. Uh, so I call myself the failing triathlete because I'm really, really worse than average, okay? I just wanted to survive, not die and things like that. So, COVID happened, events pushed back, COVID happened, but events pushed back again. You're training for a year, you're training 17, 18 hours a week, every week. An Ironman, by the way, is a 3.9 kilometer swim, 3.8 kilometer swim. 112 miles on the bike and then a full marathon. So it's a long bloody day, to say the least. Um, so the training's pretty hard. You're training 17, 18 hours a week and you're going, I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to do the event. I can't wait to celebrate after. But any Ironman will tell you, particularly during COVID, when the crowds are uh, limited and things like that. So you've done your swim, you've been blistered on the bike, you've had cramp, it's 33 degrees in Spain. Uh, your family aren't with you because the date has changed so many times and they've given up the ghost because you've been doing this for so long and said you're going to do it. They can't come because school's back and the date has changed. You run up the red carpet in Ironman. I can say it's, it's a beautiful thing to do. The crowds are going mad. Spanish Basque country are shouting animal, animal, which means courage. You're in complete agony and pain. And you cross the line and you go, yes. And then they hand you four bags from your transitions and tell you you have to walk a mile and a half to get your bike back. And there's no one even to hug you. 
be careful where you celebrate and where you think you're going to celebrate because lying in the, in the, in the shower tray when you get back to the hotel unable to drink because you've had so much artificial sugar over the period of that that's not a time to celebrate you won't be able to do it so pick your moments carefully um, one other thing I would suggest as well in terms of advice and celebration, always celebrate big where you can. I was lucky enough to be involved with a, a chief executive, he gave me loads of really good mentoring about 10 years ago in the resource group. Facilities management company, cleaning security. We grew the company to about 120 million quid. So this was cleaners, security guards and things like that. We invited them all over to Harrogate. We booked out an entire hotel, 450 people, and we had our awards night. Yeah, never been done before in facilities management. And that night, one of the top prizes for, for employee of the year was a car. And it was won by a part-time receptionist from one of our client sites. You might say that's extravagant, and it's mad, and it's crazy. But you've never seen a room light up like it. And more importantly, the reputation of that company overnight was transformed. We were movers and shakers. We knew how to celebrate our people in the right way. So I'm going to cut it short at that point. What I would say is find something to celebrate every day. And for goodness sake, always have a dance with nobody watching at least once a week. Thank you very much.